Hello, everybody. This is Carlos Ozalar, and welcome to YouTube Podcast. Today is the third episode. This time, we have with us a legendary player as well, now from Hearthstone. Of course, you guys know him. His name is called... It's not Colento. It's actually Thais. <laughs> welcome, Thais. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. I was like, oh, you're not going to say it wrong, right? You're going to say it right. So uh, <laughs> I really appreciate that. I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> I really felt like I had to. I'm very, I'm very sorry, man. Mm -hmm. uh, how's it going? Good, good. I'm, uh, no, I'm doing great. Uh, having already a like great day so far. It's actually very... uh, really cool to uh, join a podcast one time uh, with you. That's awesome. You know, you're, you're one of the person. Actually, we, we don't get to speak that often, at least as often as I would like to, to be honest. Mm. Uh, but but every time we speak, it's 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 actually uh, you know very, very refreshing to to hear your ideas, and to hear what you think, and to hear also because you're you're a streamer, of course, and 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 you stream you know more and more, you're extremely consistent, and it reminds me of the times I was a streamer myself. So you know it's 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 very cool. It's very very cool. Yeah, I would like to sometimes talk more too, but that's I mean you are a busy guy too, and uh, these players we also have go our way a lot of times, but uh, no, it's uh, it has been. Uh, has been awesome so far, and uh, I hope I'm uh, really. It's really good to see uh, you also again. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, uh, I don't know. Do, to be honest, I typically don't don't, don't want to look at the time, uh, so we have as much time as you want uh, to speak with. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> with each other. I love to talk, Carlos. I love to talk. So it's it's about. I know you doing. I do too. I'm Spanish, so <laughs> we're we're in for a fight here. It's never okay. gonna. Okay. No. <laughs> so I, I like to start off, um, Thais, to be absolutely honest here, I like to start off with a, with a Coca-Cola here. This is um, yeah, just to set up the mood, you know, just to, 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 let me actually sit from it. Right. I have a tea with me. You know that I'm like a, a big tea. tea drinker. Yeah, I'm a big tea drinker. Actually, I had, I had no idea about that. What kind of tea do you like? Uh, I like a lot of different ones. Uh, I like, uh, now I'm having a green tea, but we have uh, like on stream or uh, on times, where we are going to drink a uh, tea together with the stream, everybody at 2 p.m. <laughs> so we're even having a team time now in the stream. Uh, put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, there's something about the tea with me, man. I just, I mean, it's just hot water with a much flavor. It's like, I, I, I don't dig it, man. I need to like add it's some. It's way too warm in Spain. I mean, for it's way too warm there. If you're I, I know a cold, country, if you're in a cold country, I'm like, oh man, it's so awesome to have a, a warm tea in your hands. <laughs> I know I no longer live there. No. I, I live in Berlin, which gets really cold. Ah, right now actually it's amazing weather. Like right now, spring weather in Berlin, it's amazing. Like now it feels like borderline like in Spain. I'm having like a t shirt and I'm like enjoying myself a little bit. Anyway, bro, anyway, mm -hmm. it's it's great to have you here. And uh why don't we just start? Yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> I I would love to to, you know, as always, I actually like to so to say, go back a little bit in time, you know, to, to mm -hmm. so to say, the, the very beginnings. Like, what made you start, not even in Hearthstone, but start playing games on the computer or console or whatever? Like, how did you start playing and what do you like to play? Yeah, I... Uh... I was always a little bit of a gamer, but I have I have never been before Harston. I've never been a real gamer before. I've actually play, played a lot of uh, of League myself. Um, that's really like long ago, but before Harston came out, I was also playing a lot of League, uh, especially a little bit in the Dutch scene. Uh, what was uh, well, actually that was with the time with Youngbuck a little bit around. So that was kind of when I saw uh, I was following the scene a bit, but there were like tournaments, so I had been going to some lands where I just played for fun. I just wanted to meet other people and we we played like uh, some league there but then uh, I was also more always more a little bit in the more strategic games I was uh, I was just too bad so and I uh, I was yeah I was more like a thinker and when I saw Hearthstone coming out played a lot of card games uh, just casually or board games a lot um, I was like wow that's such an that's such a cool game what well, well, what is this let's check it out Blizzard what kind of board out. games do you play Oh, I don't know the right uh, translation, but you know, maybe like Risk. Uh, oh, I love, oh, yeah, I love Risk. We should play Risk one time. I'm uh, serious. Oh, man, I really tried hard. I've got to tell you already. <laughs> man, I love that game. I absolutely, man, you'd be surprised. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is going to be a competitive game in here, Thais. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm definitely up for that. I, uh, we always had these uh, in the weekend where we came with friends or even with my family. We had like the Sunday where we, we played like board games uh, with each other. 
So that was uh, that was where it all That's awesome. a little bit uh, a little bit started, and yeah, then I saw Hearthstone coming out. I was yeah, I was just I just was like, oh wow, let's let's check it out. And uh, I got early in the beta, and then uh, I just enjoyed the game so much. Like I I just wanted to only play nothing serious, just playing arena mode. I, I was like that free to play player at the start that just played <laughs> arena all the time and just having a lot of fun there. And uh, yeah, then at some point I was like, let's just, I just wanted to play more. So I found like online tournaments to start playing in a bit. And it turned out that it actually went, uh, that I picked up ideas really fast, uh, especially in the beta where, yeah, like if you, if you can pick up things really fast in the early beta, early stages of the game, you really have uh, an advantage. And I just got addicted to like playing tournaments a bit and I just, yeah, I really, uh, really enjoyed to just discover the game from there. All right, very cool. So you, you, you started, um, so to say, in the, like your competitive background as per it relates to Hearthstone. Um, you, you had, I think it was like a record of like eight, nine uh, wins in a row in uh, King of the Hill. How, how do you think that affected, uh, that affected sorry, uh, your career? Um, it actually got affected my career a lot. It was, um, uh, it was at that point, there were not other tournaments than the, the weekly online tournaments you had. And, uh, yeah, when I won, like I, from the, from the six, I think I won five in a row and then even two afterwards, uh, it got my name out. It got, it was my first push to got my, uh, to put my name out. Then I got, uh, invited by um by uh, artosis and nimsh that they're like doing all the the uh, the tournaments there a bit uh to just play against like one of the most public figures known and then uh yeah then i won and i was <laughs> was shaking my my hands off I, I i was happy i played the card game that i called just because if i will play a mobile game i will shoot everything miss and not <laughs> get it not get a single cs so I was really happy that I, I could stay in my mind. Like my mind was still strong. My body was shaking, but my mind was strong. And yeah, that's got, uh, and then I, I started to become just more, a little bit more confident. Like if you win two in a row, you, you just start to feel more confident and that you can, uh, yeah. And I, and I just realized like there were a lot of people early in the beta that got over from other games that were already a little bit known, but then I was just, yeah, that I could challenge them and that I was maybe, uh, better against so and that so, I then so, won not nine in a row. Yeah, that was beautiful. Nine in a row. Okay. So, um, you know, talking about. Um, uh, by the way, I have a few topics that I would like. But there's this is a conversation. So just you know, yeah. we may start in X plays and we may end up talking about politics. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just free for all. It doesn't need to be hard to start anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with, with that said, how do you think? that um, confidence, having confidence affects your play in Hearthstone. Because when I look at League of Legends, when I look at Counter-Strike, um, these are games where confidence is actually making you better mechanically. Confidence allows you to outplay opponents because you're steps ahead. It just, it just confidence is very, very important. But I wonder whether confidence, confidence is counterproductive when you're playing a card game just because you may think your chances are better mm. than what they actually are. So what can you tell me about that? Um, in the early stages, confidence was really important. I feel it might now be a little less, but it was really important to, to just pick up the early, the, the early ideas. The game was just at the start. It was still like a game that the game is only four years old or five years like it's it's a really young game and in the first uh, one two years a lot of combos still had to discover then yeah it was really uh confidence i think is still it, it, it just played it, it makes your play a little bit easier but yeah i agree like we are also following the numbers we are uh we are card games like i play a lot of times uh my percentages too so yeah i am really and confidence sometimes makes it a little easier um yeah, you, you, you take the risk of taking a 30% win maybe, where sometimes if you don't feel the confidence, you play, you keep playing it safe, you keep playing it safe, and suddenly you actually throw the game by actually just not doing much at all. I see. So being overly defensive. Yeah, like um, you, you need to know the spot you are in the game. 
And it's sometimes it's good to just be a bit more confident knowing where you are. All right. Uh, so um, one of the first tournaments you played, um, it was with Medium Makers uh, in, in a team where Radu was also there, right? Um, what was it to be, you know, in this tournament? What, what, was, what, did it feel, what did it feel like? Because if it is, you didn't have any esports experience. You just, I guess you were just, you know, you like the game and you happen to be good at it and you happen to qualify or to get invited to these events. And, and how did it all feel all together? Like having a contract with the team and so on? Um, yeah, the first experience um, at that point, there were like the really the Dream X in 2014. Oh, wow. That's so, uh, so long ago, man. But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I, I had mean... less wrinkles. Sorry? I had less wrinkles and oh. more hair. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, we all, this comes with everyone, but uh, yeah, I um, I had um, the first tournaments where, uh, yeah, the, the DreamX, and when I won my first uh, DreamX in Bucharest 2014, I mean, I, you have no idea what you go through, like, you you just got, you just have to, everybody puts you in a spot from, hey, you have to play, and you don't even realize what's all going on, and then suddenly, after a two-hour game, you win the final, and you hold a trophy, and I, I can barely like re you know, remember like with the feelings that I had just that I was afterwards uh, yeah that I experienced one of the most happiest uh, times in in my life. That's the only real thing I can remember. But yeah, then you also see it. Uh, it was really cool to see. Then also yeah, me and Radu had a really nice connection together that we uh, wanted that we got like first it was MIM where we uh, got into mm -hmm. for some time um, and. Then we we went to uh, Nihila uh, when uh, Lothar and uh, because me and Radu were especially really young and we kind of were uh, happy to find Lothar and life coach that were a little bit more experienced as persons um, and yeah that we found them was really that I think for me and Radu was really important because we got uh, yeah just follow them a little bit in the way of uh, yeah well working as a team but just uh, finding what is good for us uh, as a team. Right, so try, trying to get a little bit more involved in, in that moment uh, in which uh, Lothar from uh, Nihilum picked you up, picked you and Radu up, um, as well as life coach. Like, how, how was that moment? How, what did that mean to you? Um, when, uh, sorry. Um, in the DreamHack Winter 2014, I still remember that was um, we had first had DreamHack uh, Bucharest that I uh, what was two three months before we already had a little bit of uh, talks, um, but then that DreamHack Winter, um, yeah, uh, it was just uh, me and Radu. We were think we were looking for something else. Uh, we didn't want to continue um, too much in and our, and then we uh, yeah then we met uh, Lothar and I played in the semifinals against Life Coach I still remember oh and um, that was like a really really close game and then I played against in the finals well against Colento that time I sadly lost um, but yeah then afterwards you can't uh, beat yourself no well that's what I say sometimes too but that's an easy <laughs> excuse Carlos but I can we I played a lot against Colento so it's it's an easy excuse, but uh, yeah, and then uh, no, then uh, Nihilema started to become like uh, a team, and uh, yeah, we we thought it was like the right fit. We also wanted to have a team as three or four players. Me and Radu were the only active real players in MIM, so we were really looking for uh, a team squad because there were quite some team tournaments mm -hmm. going on and also on. Yeah, and then uh, when we found uh, Nihilem, I think that was like. One of the best uh, also moments uh, in the early stages where, yeah, we won the team league. We won uh, the the big yeah the Arkan team league. What well, was like the biggest team league uh, in the yeah in, uh, at that <laughs> point? It was first uh, we went in the top four. We only went like third, but then we won uh, three series in a row uh, to just win the tournament. It was a fourteen hours playing it. 14 hours uh, that we played in a row what was insane. Oh my God, really? Yeah, yeah. It That's was, crazy. It was, uh, well, the, the matches were best of nine or like they oh were really God. long. Jesus and Christ. you played three in a row, yeah, you had like <laughs> half an hour break, but it was just, you all go the moment. And uh, yeah, that was that was really nice that we won, uh, won it with the team uh, together. That's going to be almost as long as our risk game. 
Our wrist game, yeah, a wrist could take really long. I have that to you. <laughs> that motherfucker is long as I can get. <laughs> but, yeah, but sometimes normally you have like a one or two players that are then a little bit easier and say like, okay, it's okay. We you you have to let somebody say like, yeah, you win. But if you have two persons next to each other, they're not gonna do that. You can have a yep. really long game. For sure. All right. So the the the, the team part, the kind of the how did that team, you know, life coach Radu and yourself. Why do you think the team worked out so well? Like, you know, if I look back, when you guys, when you three were all together, there was like, you, you guys were the undeniably best team in the world and the most loved team as well. So why do you think fans loved you guys so much? Why do you think you were the fan favorites? Um, I think um, you, you could see it in our motivation a lot. Like, we were so motivated. Like, there was not an single time that we didn't like practice every evening we just played with each other um we were we were so dedicated and motivated we also had a really different approach to the game uh, than a lot of other people where yeah hearts on a lot of people when they lose they they always have an excuse why they lost and we were really a team that uh, that never did that and yes yeah, sometimes we lost but then we took a review on stream and we talked just for two or three hours why we we lost and we tried to improve we that's crazy we, that's good we really were like <laughs> looking at ourselves all the time and you you just could see that at some point it was really paying off so yeah when we won the team league that was really the moment where we got the, the recognition to where yeah we worked at the hardest for it or and that we then won it but yeah that was like a beautiful way to to yeah to make it complete that's awesome. Very good. So from a personal standpoint, because um, you know, looking at Hearthstone gameplay, looking at how, you, how hard you guys work, uh, it's undeniable that you guys were, you know, you were, you were great as a team. How was it to um, have so many different characters in the team? Because when you look at, on, on, on a personal level, I'm talking, of course, when you look at your kind of character, someone typically very optimistic, very positive, very, you know, always looking at the bright side. Um, then you have Radu, someone who is incredibly emotional. He's like a roller coaster of emotions, you know? He will tilt off the face of Earth and then he will be incredibly motivated and like inspired. And on the other hand, you have Life Coach, which is a rock. It's a, it's a soci it's sociopath, is too much of a word, but it's like a very pragmatic, you know, a very pragmatic individual. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. So, how these all those three characters collide in I mean, the same I, I, team. I'm not going to lie. Like we had moments where it was really hard to get everything work together. But I also think that it uh, really uh, made us or it, it, that's why we worked so well together. That we were able to, um, sometimes you, that we could look at from different perspectives or we, I think it's, it, we definitely had some, hard times uh, to make it work but it also definitely uh we improved on a lot of areas like now rather yeah he was like the most <laughs> one of the most emotional players that was around but he was also like getting less emotional and uh when me and their first uh life coach he was uh, yeah he was like um he really i mean he had a really uh, for him it worked really well already in the poker so he was really confident but sometimes I could ask a question to him and he took it serious and he was like, well, if you bring it up, I'm, um, yeah, then, then maybe that is like that. And so he, he, he became also more open in the team. Um, yeah, a little bit hard to like look at your own spot a little bit, how it is from the outside, because yeah, you only uh, look, can see it from your side. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like, um, especially me, I improved a lot. I called, uh, yeah, I called look up to everybody a little bit. Everybody had something else I called look up uh, a bit. And yeah, some things I just wanted to do my own way, but I learned a lot uh, during the process. Okay, that's a very polite answer. Now, what role do you think Lothar played uh, com combining the fact that you guys have very different characters? Like, how important do you think Lothar's role was at that time? Um, at that time and still like really important uh, he just halted and um, yeah just hold the team together and uh, if there was something uh, going on Lothar will be the, a little bit more calm guy that will 
get things a little easier and uh, and solve it and that it yeah just uh, what you need you just need it um, it's just uh, hard as a team to always work uh, together and uh, well first Lothar also was just uh, also playing really competitive Hearthstone so he was also like uh, we could also work with him really well around tournaments and uh, we also played tournaments as four and afterwards also just as a coach as a friend um as everything like we already uh work now together for three years four years like it's it's a really long time that we are already now how hard to carry was lothar between you and i don't worry no one will listen how hard uh, to carry was it? i mean it, we learned through the process you know like it, it's <laughs> that's the best answer <laughs> So. You're very polite, Thais. I mean, I'm getting a headline from here. Uh, Lothar is a piece of shit. <laughs> I, hey, that were not my words. That were not my words. <laughs> uh, a little bit. Uh, and that's the good thing about our team, too. Like, we can have also, like, a really... We are just really friends. Like, we can say... the, the, the We joke a lot around. We, can, uh, we all can take a shot and have a shot and deal a shot uh, to each other. And we all know it's just all fine and friendly and i think that also made us really strong like if there was something if there was something going on things never went really like that big at all yeah, for sure i mean you, you really have to be friends like real friends to keep lothar for that long to be honest <laughs> okay production can, can you tell me what's the win rate of lothar in our production <laughs> okay so the win rate of lothar in harston is 23.8 percent. thank you production uh, so did <laughs> So this is this is real numbers, people. This is being checked out as we speak. Mm. The real numbers. I'm I'm sorry, Lothar, for you. <laughs> it's all it's all jokes, okay? It's all jokes. Um, right. So <laughs> that was for the team side, and, I, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm making I'm making mm -hmm. uh, laugh. Uh, but that was for the team side. You guys were a, were a unit. Everyone loved you for different reasons. Competitive success because they just liked you. Um, We'll get later into into streaming, but because you guys also streamed all of you, and and overall you you guys did a very good job of kind of you know making people want to root for you. With that said, from an individual standpoint, all of you guys played individual tournaments, of course. And while you guys prepared together for those tournament, um, uh, the truth is that at the end of the day, you're the one that is in front of your opponent one on one in that one tournament, right? And 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 then you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? got you to be uh, a back-to-back -back European champion. Yeah, at the end of the day, Hearthstone is a 1v1 game. So, yeah, it's um, really, you have to do it all yourself. But practice against people that are some of the others best of the world. Like, you can only improve if you play against people that are equal or having something you can also learn from. And, yeah, the, the team environment in that made, uh, made it happen that we got all, like, become uh, play at the European Championship and play at all the, the big tournaments. And yeah, why it uh, went for me, the first European Championship, uh, it was actually uh, me and Life Coach at that time, but that we both qualified for the top 16 and the top four world advanced to the World Championship. Um, I still remember, like I went to his place, I we practiced for two weeks and that were really days wow. from, uh, uh, from 8 a.m that we woke up and at 8 p.m. we uh, we ended the day. And yes, yeah, sure, we, we had breaks in between, but we really had a daily schedule of like... So you, so you woke up 8 a.m.? I'll be honest here, guys. Like, that is the, the most non-gamer thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still every day waking up at 9 a.m. now. I know, I see you stream every day at 10, so that's... I mean definitely have to prepare so, and all that so I, I, that's not normal i'm just telling you that <laughs> there are two things i like that is like one gaming and second sleeping so it helps uh, i i also really feel i need my sleep i just need to sleep how many hours do you sleep actually off, off topic uh nine hours a day often so i that's sleep a very lot. good that's uh, oh. that's amazing you know many people actually ask this is again off topic we'll, we'll get it back to to the topic we're talking about right? many people kind of talk uh, about you know this hustle you gotta you gotta give up sleep to succeed and blah blah and i'm like listen if i sleep less than eight hours i'm a zombie in a half okay so mm -hmm. people just don't get the importance of sleeping and especially especially if you have a challenging job like the one you have <clears throat> in which you really have to think very fast you have to be very creative 
you have to kind of connect the dots really, really fast and make very fast calculations. Um, what, what is your take on sleep overall? Yeah, I think sleep is like one of the most, well, it's not a skill maybe, but it's one of the most important things for, uh, yeah, for, for a lot of jobs, but also just for eSport players. And I really could not live on a schedule where I wake up at 1 p.m. I know like it's the most, a lot of streamers, pro players, they, that's the way they start their day. But I feel so more productive when I start the day sure. earlier. Um, and yeah, I, I just feel I, I just need the sleep to think out like the best, to perform the best, to to make the best out of my day and to improve. So it's oh, very good. It's, right, so, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I went completely different topic. Let's go back <laughs> to the back to back championship. Uh, yeah, like the the European Championship at Prague. So I went two weeks um, to to uh, um, to Austria, where life coach lived at that time, and we just practiced so hard. We we just played for ten hours a day, and it was like four or five hours of playing. But Hearthstone is a really analyzing game too, so we analyzed a lot. Uh, so when we had a game, why did I lose? Why did I win? Why did uh, why Colin did you win? Why? Colin, you lose, but well, like just a lot of questions, and sometimes it was the same spot, and we just had, we we tried to angle four different questions, just all a little bit different to learn. And I have never felt so ready for a tournament as I was for my first European uh, Championship. I prepared so hard. I knew uh, what my decks were. I knew how to. I just knew every matchup. Like there. When you have three decks, like, yeah, you can only face three decks, but the field can be, like, really wide, and you can get in so many uh, different spots. Like, in chess, um, after the four, first four or five turns, there are already unlimited amount of, like, options that can go. But in card games, with always having different openings, and it's always your opponent having different openings, and it's, like, a human cannot do that. Um, so... But we are so ready. Like I, I felt I know every matchup like from the start on. And uh, yeah, when I was playing the the European Championship, I I just knew I was every time making the correct decision. And I I almost have had barely a second time that I was like thinking, is it even right? I just knew it. I I practiced so much. And yeah, then I I won the quarterfinals. I first won the group. I won the quarterfinals. And well, it was for me first about getting top four. To qualify for worlds and i did and then also life coach did and we faced each other in the semi-finals i won um but that was yeah that was a close one could have been maybe gone also the different way yeah and then i won uh, i i also won the finals against nerea that time it was uh it was but i was i i just knew when i went to the tournament that i was gonna qualify i knew that it was not even a chance to not become top four there um so i've never felt that that's not something i would say almost ever um but yeah at that point I, I was really feeling it and the second time was right after a new expansion so i think that is becoming one of my better factors now um when there is a card rotation going on um yeah so kind of like a really big it's just a big patch kind of with new cards new elements um because i played the game already so long on a high level I can adapt really fast and I know what if things are gonna work or are not gonna work just earlier. And I and do you think that's actually um so because that clearly tells me that you just know more about the game than the rest. So when the when Blizzard throws at you more variables to make a difference, as it's the case when there are new cards that people not everyone knows about how to play correctly, then there's more variables in place and therefore you can make a bigger difference with the skill difference that you have. Do you think that it's an inherent problem of the game that the game becomes perhaps too flat sometimes, uh, leading then people like you that could be considered among the best in the world to not be able to make a difference once the meta settles down? It's... Uh... Depends a little bit on the meta because some metas are actually only good for you if they settle down. And like in a control meta, I would love to settle it down. Like some specific mirrors, I would just love to play. And I think I'm that's an advantage. But when now lately, 
when there's also so much programs in Hearthstone around where people can pick up ideas or they can just see what's what are really good decks, good cards so fast already. Um, yeah, the early times where new new cards come out, uh, you're just a little bit earlier to adapt, I think, uh, than new players. It's just hard for new players that some cards I have seen two years ago that now some kind of the mechanics come back and I know how powerful uh, they can be or can work out. I see. When it comes to <clears throat> your competitive career and pretty much giving up, <coughs> sorry, parts of your life <clears throat> or sacrificing things of your life that you wouldn't have sacrificed if you wouldn't have the competitive career. What can you tell us about those things? What things do you feel you would have done if your competitive career wouldn't have been as, success as successful as it was? Well, I first of all, the, if, I, if that balance like, work out, it is something I have been rolling into. Like It has never even been on my mind for the first uh, 16 years of me to, to do anything with this. Um, I will definitely um, first finish my university. Like I only still have one year to go, but I am now currently, um, I'm probably, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to finish it anymore, but that will for sure be my first thing. And um, then you probably so, forgot what you were studying at this point. No, I did this was like <laughs> next. I, did, I know, I know. So, um, yeah, like that was also a study really in the numbers a bit, uh, business economics. So it was, uh, it was something oh, that's actually good. Um, but it's, uh, I at the end, I wasn't sure if that would be really my thing because I, I wanted to do a little bit more with people, um, to, to be closer to people a bit. So I was already like, it was nice that this came my way. And yeah, where I, will that be? And I have no idea. I, I am the person that if I will find some, something that I like, I just go for it. And, and I'm work, I will work, work hard for it. So maybe something else will come my way. So it's a, it's a little bit hard to say. Life can go fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you receive a lot of uh, comments, close acquaintances about, why don't you just finish it? Oh, yeah, often. I, um, I, I still well, what is your take on that? Because again, like what you want, what you need, what you want. And many people that are listening to this, many people are actually probably thinking, why doesn't he just finish? It's only one year left, right? But do you, do you really want to finish? And, and, and it, it, it really is your context. It's, it's only you have that kind of context. So why do you feel like it's not the moment? Um, I think school is something you should actually finish um but you at school you learn to uh you learn to become an yeah smarter learn during the way and i feel i'm now just learning so much more growing so much more as a person by what i'm doing um i'm like i traveled so much around already but i give gives a great life experience i think if you only see certain yeah, just your country and maybe some certain areas. Like if you get that live experience, if you, uh, yeah, if and so so much comes your way. Um, you you start to uh, like see how a whole team develops and how that all how that all goes. It's really uh, streaming is a big thing. Like all the communication and just with what I'm <laughs> doing, finding what I'm doing. Like what do I want more? I I find something so awesome. I have the luxury that I it, I can do it for a living. And it's something I feel I'm still improving daily on uh, as a way, way more than by finishing school. Like you're, I, I think you're, by the way, absolutely right. Um, if there was one thing <clears throat> that I would, like, if, if you tell me, choose this one thing that you'll um, ensure your son does, throughout his life. And I would just say travel, mm -hmm. just travel, 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 you know, travel everywhere, meet other cultures, realize that perhaps uh, uh, the different religions are not that different, things like that, you know, like, and, and, and then <clears throat> that's probably the, the, the best way to grow with empathy and grow uh, with kind of the hunger because you have the context of all the world and you're like, I'm so lucky to have these tools in front of me let me use them the best I can, you know, let me try to do the best I can with them. Yeah. Like I was also, also always a, a little bit more of a safe person. 
but I just got a like I just want like the things that went well I just wanted to continue and then I actually don't want to like look too much around it anymore but when I got thrown into this I think it's the best thing that has like happened to me to to get out of the bubble a bit uh from where you are from and yeah just see so much of the world and experience sometimes the same things but in so many different ways it, it just opens yourself a lot yeah, like, <clears throat> you know, I, I read so many things from my life. Oh, I love and... reading, too. <laughs> oh, you love reading? Well, actually, what do you like to read? Mm, I just like, uh, I like to just think about psychology and these kind of ways. Just oh, yes. think about. So it's not that I... Do you read meditation, the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius? Oh, no, I haven't read that one, actually. You, you have to read that. It's, yeah. uh, it's um, let, 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 me, let me think. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, um, uh, it, it, it'll come to me, mm -hmm. uh, but, but the books are amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And, and this Marcus Aurelius, his meditations, literally what it is, you know, he explains, uh, his thoughts, oh, stoicism, stoicism is called. Oh, okay. It's, it's actually amazing. Like some of the things of stoicism, I may not like fully agree with, but the book is wonderful. You have to read it hundred percent. And these Next things, thing. these things you don't think like have to do much with like esports of what you're doing, but it just improves you as a person. It's uh, it nah, really, you... everything is the same. Like, you know, from all experience, like literally <clears throat> reading all these books, uh, doesn't matter what you do, even if you just want the best uh, bread baker in the world, it just, it just fits. Everything fits, you know, it's just, it's just very basic foundations of your thought processes and the way to think and things like that. So everything, it, it feels to me like everything is just part of the same thing and can be applied to your daily life and whatever you do. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> kind of tying it to the, to the career uh, uh, topic. You know, if you wanna be a surgeon, if you wanna be something that absolutely requires that knowledge in a paperwork that determines this guy has started this, and this guy knows exactly how to cut your brain off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's needed, right? Because you don't want any errors or mistakes or anything whatsoever. You don't want trial and error with someone that is opening up your brain, right? Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to building a group of people that work towards the same goal, in other words, a company, and when it comes down to just being self-employed of any kind, when it comes down to building anything in life, really, it, from own experience, nothing such as just jumping to the pool without knowing how to swim has taught me more than, than, than that. Like nothing, not reading, not mm -hmm. studying anything, just jump into the pool. And when your back is against the wall, when, you have, when you're close to have no money left, then you will find, you'll get creative because otherwise you, you just don't survive. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I've also a lot of like respect in that way, how you started doing that. Like I can see you started like here first as a player and you just like, Look, going for that new adventure and uh, and going like things go sometimes so fast, faster than you have in mind, and you it's just have to, you have to adapt so fast sometimes. Um, that, that, does it feel for you like the last three years have passed very fast for you, or does yes. it feel like oh, they were long? Yes. No, it's so fast. I was think I was like before this. Uh, I went here on the podcast. I was just like looking up, and I was like, okay, yeah, like. I started in G2 when the rebranding was still going on, where we still were like uh, the G2 or the uh, Gamers 2 thing first. Yeah, I know oh, don't say the, don't oh, say yeah, the no, G I word. Know. Don't I, say the G I, word. I was like, can I say that? I was like, the G word is banned. Production. You haven't, you haven't told him beforehand? So yeah, that that's was where it, that's where it all, and then uh, that, that's already, that's already uh, two and a half, three years ago. So things, have been going really fast and then I can, yeah, all the the tournament travels that I had in the first or like for two years long, still travel quite some, but the first two years, like I have, I had weekends where I was just not at home. So many Hearthstone tournaments there were that you were just every weekend you were somewhere else. Yeah. That's crazy. So true. <laughs> so I'm going to keep <clears throat> gonna focusing on the competitive aspects of the team and, and yourself as well. And on the lineup and things like that, um, I want to make sure that the last part of the stream goes for um, the part that I find in my head the most fun, which is the stream part and and, and fan questions and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But let's keep going with it with it, with it, with the competitive aspect. So, 
life coach at some point in time um, decides, and actually it wasn't at some point in time. You could see he was getting worked up over time in regards to Harston. Um, actually, how was that process of, of, of seeing him getting increasingly frustrated with how Blizzard managed the, the, the title? It was probably for me uh, really difficult because um, he always, I pushed him a lot too. Like I, I knew already as the first one when things were a little bit in his mind already as I practiced so much with him. And uh, we, the, I already knew at some point that, yeah, he was thinking about going different directions or that he lost some enjoyment here and there from time to time. So I kept pushing him uh, with, yeah, no, that, yeah, like, we don't know what's going to happen in two months. We don't know what's going to happen in three months. Let's see then. Um, we're going to have an next tournament. Let's practice for that. Also having fun times sometimes and doing some fun stuff with uh, each other. So I was going over to him two times. And so I, I, I saw these things already like half a year pre probably before. And he also wanted to push himself. So it was not just me. He also wanted to. So I was really... Um, yeah, for me, it, it was not a surprise, but yeah, it, it was just unfortunate. I I realized at some point also that, yeah, it's if this is his decision, there's it's his decision. And I just accepted him from the first point already. Um, but it right. was, I really would have loved to like, uh, and I hope he would have loved too. But yeah, if the enjoyment is not there anymore, the excitement, do, it's hard. Do you actually think that um, if he wouldn't have, made this absolute like you know life coach is a per i'm not gonna tell i'm, I'm gonna ask, mm -hmm. say yes or no i just know this for a fact life coach is a person uh, he has an ego right he has an ego um just like everyone right it's just like i do just like many people he has a, a very strong ego right mm -hmm. um and do you think that him speaking in absolutes and saying i'm i'm leaving this game i'm not playing this game anymore played a role in him not returning as opposed to him backtracking. Like, I, I, by the way, when I saw him saying, I will never play this game ever again, I knew for a fact he wouldn't backtrack. I just, I just knew him. Same. Because the way he is, mm -hmm. he would never backtrack. That's his, mm -hmm. his, his ego thing, right? He would never backtrack. So mm -hmm. do you think if he wouldn't have made such an absolute statement, he could still be around? Um, there is a chance, and I f still think there is a part in him that would have loved to still play Hearthstone. Um, but there is a part also not. Um, and yeah, he chose first to continue, and then he chose a different way. So I still think there is a part in him that wants to play Hearthstone. Uh, I don't think he's happy with now switching card games all around and so hoping for new good things to come. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I definitely think uh, I definitely think so. Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, I I, want, I really want to move on from life coach, but I can't, man. Like he is such an he's such a character. I mean, let's be honest. Um, he has been I one, myself. Yeah. I, I've met a lot of people. Uh, I have I have I have the chance in my life to have met a lot of people, and I don't think I've ever met anyone like him. Like he's just so unique. He's um, been a really huge inspiration for me, like in so much. Um, I've been getting inspired so much. Yeah, some things I actually completely disagreed with, maybe. And <laughs> I wanted to do my way, but he has been like, yeah, like the way he thinks, the way he, he does. Uh, a lot of parts has been uh, like an inspiration for me. Very good. Well, mm -hmm. life coach era. And I'll call it an era because that guy was, you know, considered a legend by many people. Um, or the era with Life Coach, let's just call it that way, came to an end. And um, a new opportunity to build a slightly different team appeared, of course. And as a result, Nerea joined the, um, joined the team. What was the process like? Like, how did how did you and Radu come up to the conclusion that he was the right, you know, third player? And I guess Lothar was also part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, how, how were those conversations? What were you looking for? Yeah, that is uh, that was something where me, Radu, and uh, Lothar had been talking about uh, a lot. We wanted a third player that we respected a lot 
uh, ourselves. So we really wanted a um, tier tier one player that we considered. We preferred Europe uh, just to make things easier in time zones if you want to practice. Uh, so, right. but it wasn't directly a cut, but it was our preference to stay as a European team. Um, and well, I I knew Nerea already quite well. Um, I played against him in my first European championship in 2014. I went to him at the world championship. Um, afterwards, he has like he has been around as long as uh, me and Radu in the tournament scene. So he was also really early, and he was just a really good player. I respect him a lot as a player, and um, that was something that we uh, we all needed. We needed me, Lothar, and Radu. We needed a player we respected. We can practice with. We can learn from. Um, and yeah, there was like maybe some others uh, that we. Kind of took a short look, but the, the list was not so big. Like we really want, we really had like our focus on maybe if one of these three players might be available, that is what it is going to be. And otherwise, yeah, we might have a big issue. Um, so, so it was. I, I was really happy when it also worked out. And uh, like, yeah, like there's no big me. issue. Hmm? Captain Lothar was ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. That was true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, but uh, it, it is nice. To... You don't even want to believe it yourself. You don't, you don't even want to envision that that image. You don't even want to. Do that. No, no, no. Like, but for that would also mean like me and Radu, we wanted to like we have our full focus on Hearthstone, and Lothar can do that too. But then all the focus has to be on Hearthstone. Like, I don't want him to do a job for you uh, if he's in the Hearthstone team. I want him to then focus on Hearthstone. So it's uh it's just um you need an you need a team that can full focus on th just that one thing. The problem for me sometimes also is like yeah, you get so many distractions from thrown from everywhere but you need to keep your full focus uh to perform the best. Perfect. Yeah, but and, and I'm putting you on, on the spot but it, you know, it's just because by the way, Lothar is part of the production crew. So every time I'm talking, he's listening to it live. You're so mean he, sometimes. He can actually he can actually talk to me, like directly without you listening to it. So I'm always triggering him with shit like this. I absolutely love it. And then he will just add some kind of cheeseburger on my face or something like that because he controls the production, and that's okay, you know. We're we're not selling this to TBS just just yet. You know? <laughs> We can curse. We can just shit on each other. That's a little okay. bit memeing around. That's Abs good. Absolutely, absolutely. So, this is one of the spiciest topics out there, which is esports, Lul. Um, when when people look at Hearthstone, and when I say people, I'm not talking about myself because I see from inside of how much you guys work. I've gotten goosebumps watching tournaments, actually. Um, um, and, and to be honest, I, I absolutely love Hearthstone as an esport, but I can see why other people don't, and that may be attached to a very high level of RNG. Right? So RNG, for those of you who are watching, is essentially a randomizer. Random number generator is a randomizer. There's too much random stuff that can decide the outcome of a game. And so, from your point of view, what do you think about competitive Hearthstone, first of all? And second of all, how do you think it can be fixed or improved in order to a appeal to more people? I think uh, the statement is in some ways, uh, it, it, you have a point. Yes, you have a point. And, but in some way, the statement is also uh, a little too overlooked, or how do you say it? Just an, uh, Yeah, over-exaggerated. Yeah, but, um, because, hey, I play a card game. Yeah, we play a card game. It's... It's already starts from like drawing cards. It's as like if you play the simplest card games where you just throw two cards next to each other. I mean, it's kind of the game where maybe a lot of people start and who has the highest one wins. Yeah, like yeah, there is already with drawing, there is already some. But there is a reason why there are so many play or where there are players why uh, that have just a really high percent win rate in tournaments. There is a reason why, well, I'm not sure if this is one hundred percent accurate, but why I haven't 62% win rate in tournaments. Um, and that has, yeah, there is RNG involved, but, but there are just a selected group of like 20 players that just have a really high win rate and that keep on pr uh, proving that. And the you have to see it in the long term. Um, in the short term, yeah, these things happen. 
But if I if you just look in the long term, there are just players that are performing just so consistently well um, compared to, to others. Yeah, like in the short term, I can lose the next tournament, and that can can be said. But if I get ten chances, then at, there will be times. In that way, it's kind of maybe a, a little bit like the same in uh, like it, poker has it a little bit too, where yeah, a player can like uh, win a tournament, but there are also players that do so well and want so much and keep doing. All right, so let, let me let me rephrase it, okay? Because of course, the more variables you add to every game, the more often the better player will win. The same reason why in BO5, in League of Legends, the better team will win more often than in BO1. That's mm -hmm. just the nature of more variables, right? Mathematics. So let's just not talk about that aspect. Let's just not talk about how can pro players remain um, on the first, first in the rankings of every tournament all the time. Let's actually talk about how do you think the game could l reach the next level of viewership and expectability. Like what things have you thought about, if you even have thought about it, could, um, could in improve the production quality, the spectator quality, and the overall entertainment brought by the game? Um, I definitely think that some things are just uh, in for the game, the, the thing already. Some things you just don't like. Some things are too much RNG. And these things have been mistakes. There has been card mistakes that have been made that really hurt the game um, that hopefully got learned from. Uh, and I definitely... So, yeah, there are things that, that can have too much RNG. There are cards that will not be good for the game, especially in the early game. And I, I think, um, like, Hearthstone is a little bit of an... Uh, yeah, it has a kind of, like, in that way, a fireside gathering feeling. It's not as... Like, in Counter-Strike, there are these three seconds, and even I watch Counter-Strike, and I'm like, holy, what's going on here? There, um, In these three seconds. And there is not that always that that uh, that excitement in Hearthstone in these right. three seconds. It's, an, it's something so, so do, that do takes think, two minutes. Do, do you think it's a mistake from Blizzard, potentially? Again, like, we are... You and I know nothing in comparison with these guys. These guys are money-making machines. Like, they know exactly how to make all of us to their games. So we know nothing against them, right? right? We have nothing against them. However, do you think there's a world in which Blizzard misjudged uh, Hearthstone as an eSport? In, in other words, they were trying to look for the wow factor. Like, you look at Jog, right? Mm -hmm. That they're clearly looking for the wow factor. Uh, they're looking for the headshot in contract, right? That is keeping you kind of like, you know, shocked of a certain moment. Do you think that's a mistake as opposed to focusing on the nature of the game, which is uh, simply uh, uh, managing your resources and cards and the resources and cards of your opponent better? I think it is definitely a mistake how, um, yeah, how they miss just also the average player in Hearthstone sometimes um, where yeah like it can be really nice for casual players that don't play the games uh, like as much as I do to sometimes have this excitement for but for them it also becomes frustrating to to lose two cards like York uh, yeah it's the first times you're like all right with it I, I pyroblast myself in a game I was actually pretty sure it was one I pyroblasted my own face and lost the game uh, as a as a, as, a, as a result, so I'm I'm one of those types. I'm all for I'm all yeah, in. Yeah, well, this. people always have their no style, their worst moments and their best moments. It's <laughs> like that that always keeps in mind. Um, but I definitely think that there has been, like, if the game is just a little uh, less, you can also enjoy these moments. I think a little bit more. So yeah, I was hoping, uh, and I also think like the deck, the uh, Hearthstone can still get do so much more with information that I hope they do in the next expansion where you can suddenly see like cards that are in your hands and then i know this is in your hands and i get information through that and that can be really cool for for you too like if you know something in my hands uh you want to like play around it a little bit here and and so on like th things don't have to always be as simple as they are like th there's a little bit sometimes too simple approach uh, right yeah so which which they oh, they want to cater for the you can make a lot of interesting and it yes for some sometimes it might go a bit too far but it also opens people a little bit i don't think you should go too far definitely 
Um, you wanna, it has like the cool thing about Harson is you take a look at it. Yeah, maybe you don't know what's going on, but play for half an hour and you already start to, hey, this is the HP, this is damage, this is space. And you start already to really fast understand the basic concepts of it. But I think still it's really important in uh, card games to not make it too difficult. So the breakthroughs, there was a, a small breakthrough moment uh, with, uh, you know, when ESL, I think it was the first time implemented the team talk, right? Was it, oh, was it ESL was or was it Archon? It was the Trinity series, what was ESL. It, it was, was ESL, right? Trinity, yeah. I thought it was a fantastic, by the way, I was, I thought that was amazing. Like really, really, really good. Um, but do you think there are, there's room for more breakthrough production moments such as that one. Yes, I think it was so it was so good. Like ESL did a great job in like uh, making. That, that, that's a hard one, by the way. I, I, that's one I haven't. ESL did a good <laughs> job. That's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are like an Arsenal. The uh, ESL is like don't see a team tournaments, and that's something Blizzard is just not doing. So that's like oh, really, it's just so cool to see too. Uh, yeah, have that communication progress where you can just hear us talking uh, towards everything. And it's something I would love to see a little bit more. Like, we are always playing a little bit the same format. Just go with a crazy format. Like, do something completely different. Why does it have to be Conquest Best of Five? Let's make this kind of format. And it's like, uh, yeah, like, viewers are like, wow. It, it just opens so much more. You're going to see so many different decks. I definitely think that... Uh, yeah, maybe you need like a standard format that is the way the World Championship uh, Tour for the year works. But there can be like just some cool aspect tournaments next to that. Um, yeah, some complete different formats. Yeah, I wish someone would just take the bull by the horns. And someone will, by the way. Like this is just the way capitalism works. Like someone will come up with this and then those that are not stepping up will definitely disappear from the map. So my hopes are up. And that a league organizer starts and comes in with something nice and, and, and out of the box creative that uh, makes people be very inter interested in the game. Because there's, there's, I, I, I hate, I hate to, to, to even think about this, but there's, there's been definitely a trend in which um, Hearthstone Esports viewership is more and more only deviating to very specific tournaments. Like you talking about BlizzCon, right? the world championship mm -hmm. uh, that would have a lot of viewers and probably every year more and more um but the, the the weekly tournaments that occur it's 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 a bit shocking to me that numbers are either decelerating or going down right and and i wonder whether this is um a byproduct of the current meta because i don't understand it enough uh, i'm sorry i can't, I can't make a judgment there mm -hmm. So I hope you can help me out. Or whether it's, uh, you know, just about timing, waiting for the new uh, cards to show up and get people interested again. What do you think? Uh, it's a little bit uh, regarding uh, the, like how far we are in expansion. Sometimes after four or five months, it can, the meta gets a little stale and mm -hmm. uh, that can be a thing. I also think uh, it has a little bit to do with uh, the open format of tournaments. Tournaments are really like... Um, uh, super open um if i win the world championship this year uh i have, will have to start at leather rankings again uh to yeah, that's, nah, by the way, that's stupid like if you are a fan of ties i mean if you're a fan of ties you're covered because you, you've been consistently very good but if you're a fan of um let's say a player that is a little bit less uh successful consistently let's just say rado actually rado he has got less uh, consistent success than you have uh, you know, when it comes into these very, very big tournaments. And, and it's just, you know, you're a fan of Radu, and then you don't see him doing very well in the next tournament or even being there at all. That by itself kills your love for the game. That by itself kills the fandom, you know? One of the, one of the reasons why Counter-Strike, League of Legends, Overwatch, all these um, uh, games and the publishers behind are moving more and more towards franchising, towards kind of having a certain level of consistency in the league when it comes into teams, when it comes into players, is because that very thing I just mentioned about Rado 
is what you want to avoid. You want fans to be a fan of a certain team and of certain players. And if those disappear from not even one year to another, but from one month to another, mm. that's fucked up. So I think the first and foremost, actually, you know, this is, this is not even like brainstorm. I'm on a rant right now. Mm. Ties. No, but that they was in the, the, in the floor, first, in, consistency. In the first year, the first two years, we had a lot of that. Uh, there was like uh, the rule: if you have like you can invite for 20 or 25 percent uh, people, or even 50 percent maybe. But uh, there, you could at least invite some players into your tournament. Um, and you had a lot of third party uh, organizers. Uh, they were like doing an Hearthstone tournament, invited some. Oh, and, and there were also some open qualifiers. So it was really combined. Uh, you, get, you get invites and open qualifiers. And now the whole, uh, the HCT tour is really focused on uh, open or like on being everything open. But maybe it's fair. Um, but they're sure, like I would really love to also have like a little circuit going on. Yeah, for where... sure. I mean, there has to be a, 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 a mix or if not a mix, there has to be some kind of system that allows you to know, okay, so early on, like Q1 and Q2 of every year, you have whatever tournaments, the you know, free-for-all, whatever, and the second part of the, of the year, only those players that have done very well beforehand will be in those tournaments, and those are going to be the big tournaments, you know? But if, if it's like a single qualification for a single tournament, it's just so bad and so... It's just bad. It's just bad. It's just it's just completely inconsistent. It doesn't make any sense. There are now some things they try. Uh, I hope they like. I think we all have it as gamers and as like teams. We both love to see things going faster, much faster. It always takes super long. I definitely see like uh, there is now way more tournament forward. Be uh, you already get like also. The prize pools are going a lot uh, in Hearthstone actually really up uh, more lower down. What is kind mm -hmm. of fair. Uh, are just increasing. Where for last year, um, qualifying for the European Championship, yeah, I think it was 100. Now you already get 1500 or something. Mm -hmm. So just qualifying. Uh, also, teams now get like they will do a team league at the end of the year. Um, if yeah. we as G2 are uh, getting top, like there's a team ranking, and uh, that also is already something uh, where they put quite some in. So there are some some things happening. Uh, it definitely, I think last year they saw that too. Are, they asked for good feedback and I hope things move fast, but uh, yeah, uh, I definitely agree. Very good. We are all gamers too. <laughs> that was yours. <laughs> I didn't say this one. <laughs> well, what do you say? I, I, said, I said nothing, Tice. Okay. And nothing. So I saw you, you, you casted um, Star Ladder. Yeah. <laughs> I did that with Lothar actually. How, how, how do you like it? Um, I actually, uh, I actually really liked it. It's really cool, but I only like it if I get the freedom. Like, I, I, if I can cast, I want to have the freedom too of what I'm saying, uh, not to, not to uh, censored or anything. Um, but and I, to I be able to like slap Lothar across the table, openly, <laughs> I, I would actually fight for that right on every tournament I cast on. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and we had some long days though. I remember the first day it was like super control meta, so it took really long. No. I don't know if it's something that, that is cool for if I would like it for a long, long time. But I definitely like it to do it at okay. time. And I will definitely if Blizzard will ask me for a cast, yeah, I will probably be like, Oh, that's pretty cool for it to do it one time. But okay. I still am a more competitor. I really like um what I'm now doing also in my streaming part and Streaming and competing is already really hard to combine. Uh, it's yeah. really hard. If you had a shout casting career right there, I don't know. Doing it also casting with it, it's just yeah. It, then you finish. Too much. You finish your university at the same time. Uh, you become a, a book writer simultaneously. Man, I would love to. I, I'm. I am really in that way. I've. You, I know you like you are also super ambitious. In that way, I would also love to do a lot. But now, like competing and streaming are the two things I. Like that has all my focus, and uh, I want. And that's that's really ambitious by itself. Um, so you said that you like casting. Um, connecting to this topic, how do you see yourself? Let's say in ten years from now. 
I it's something I think about too myself. Uh, but it is uh, it's just too far. Are you gonna be a skateboarder, uh, a snowboarder, maybe a football player? A uh, let me guess. Um, do you like hockey? A no, hockey showcaster? Um, I, I, I don't. Uh, I I would love to uh, like. To, to always try a little bit of different things, but I definitely think I'm sticking to esports. Like I found my love in esports. It's something I I completely love. I love all the people around it, the, the environment, uh, how the people are in esports. So it's something that that just stole my heart. Uh, I will stick to esports, I'm pretty sure. Where it will directly go in directions, uh, I still wanna like, I want to win. Like I still have this, 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 this feeling to just do well, and I, I still have that feeling with Hearthstone. So for me, it's still the focus for now is, uh, is all around Hearthstone. I still want to like continue. Like I really, I still sometimes I had too many tournaments, and I feel I really miss, miss the touch with people. And I, I feel I get that feeling from streaming. I love to stream and just start the day off and have so many people already joining in the early morning yeah. and. Just saying hi to you. Already there, like hi. Just and that you see people coming yeah. back from time to time. One person turning up, that already means the world because that one person is taking morning off to watch you. Like that already is such a such is a gift. It's ridiculous. It's like it's it's a lot in people's like just daily rhythm. Like instead of like putting the TV on, they, they turn the, or reading a newspaper, they, <coughs> they start the day with a coffee and watch your stream and that's, that, uh, or, that's even, beautiful. or even on the work. <laughs> what a, yeah, it's, 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 so that is definitely my focus and yeah, where things will go, I will, it will definitely all over, like, I found, I will definitely stick in, uh, in esports, definitely. Like, and by all, we'll be, we'll be there uh, to help you out and I'll be there for you out, whatever I can. Mm -hmm. I think you're fantastic and, and, and a great guy, really. Um, extremely talented. And your know-how and, and attributes can and should be utilized um, later in your career, for sure. Because many of the things you are very good at today, maybe patience, maybe an, uh, being good at analytics, maybe um, uh, you know, understanding the opponent's move, like that, literally, those skills, those attributes are the same exact attributes uh, that you would have in, in many, in many roles, actually, in many jobs, in, in, in many different companies. So I can see that working out for you, definitely. Yeah, I hope so. It, 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 for me, it might still be what I'm rolling, what I'm rolling into, but for now, and that's definitely for the next, uh, next years, uh, Hearthstone and uh, will still be my thing. I, I still, like I have become twice European champion, so I feel I achieved quite some, and it's sometimes hard to put a higher goal on it because you always need a goal. It's it's hard to work without a goal. I always put it a small goal that I called achieve in a short time uh, to keep myself motivated. But it's like there is not. It's really hard for me now. Uh, after like yeah, I'm going to the European regionals, and of course I want to prove. I, I want to show myself again uh, there, uh, but. Yeah, at the end of the day, I still have like, I still want to stay there again at the World Championship, and I really hope I can I can do it there. Will Tice be the three-time <laughs> EU champion? I mean, things are not getting easier. It's get harder. It feel like people are getting really much better uh, in the game, and uh, so that's already a thing. Like. There's so there are a lot of good players now around, so it doesn't get easier. But yeah, I'm already did like uh, just a week ago. I qualified myself again, and I was really proud about that. That uh, yeah, since 2014, I made every European regionals that are uh, that's crazy that you have to qualify for uh, each three months. And in Hearthstone, that's not easy. So you also uh, attended every H HCT, right? Um, yeah, 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 that is like the European uh, regional circuit. So oh, that, that's what it's called? Yeah, yeah, I call it the European regionals, but it's called the Hearthstone Championship Tour. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, very good. So now to the fun part. Fun the competitive part, guys. Let's go to the fun part. Mm. The stream. So when, when you started, how many viewers did you have? The question is already when did I start? That's already a hard question because actually, oh yeah, there you go. Um, how did I start? Yeah, I started the first year with like 
streaming one or two evenings in the week and it was super inconsistent then i streamed a week then i was two weeks gone for a tournament so when are you a streamer it's already uh the first part um all right so uh, let me rephrase i had an idea of a question actually when did you start streaming i started streaming uh almost four years ago four years ago i I, I now have like people that followed or subbed already for four years. So the real what when I see like when I started streaming and you had to, like uh, you were partnered and all all this kind of thing that has been like uh, almost four years ago. It's like two months to ago or two months more and then I think four years. Okay. So and and, and when you started, how many viewers do you have, and for how long? Oh well, the first streams maybe like 10 20 but it it went already really fast Ooh. to 50. It, it was like i think 50 was uh after three days it was already often 50. i mean okay so 50. I, I started, how long do you have 50. um i think for the first uh one or two months and then i also okay. then we had uh there was like a summer vacation and because i was still like a guy that just went to school like that was just my life at that point um, and then I was uh, taking my summer vacation to stream. <laughs> I just wanted to play Hearthstone, so I sum I had uh, it was like one month that I yeah streamed like five days a week I think. Um, and at that point it went fast to like uh, the first one. At, it was it went already from the start on to one hundred, and then I had sometimes like a, a peaks around uh, like five hundred or something. That was how it started. Okay. Okay. Very good. You know it's. Thais, when, when, when it comes down to uh, streaming, many people, and I think this is probably one of the questions you get the most, you know, how do you become a top streamer? And many times the answer is less fancy than what they think. Uh, many times the answer is yes. Look, as you just said, that had 50 viewers for two months, you know? Do you ever get disappointed at it? Do you ever get, you know, uh, sad about it? I was I was enjoying it. I couldn't stop streaming. Go. Like it's it was it, it had nothing to do. And that's also the first thing I say when every anybody asks this question. I, I say already I don't know if streaming is a thing for you because that that question is already way too far. Exactly, you're uh, hundred percent correct. Like, don't have any goal. Go stream. Have fun. Play games. Play your game and uh, have fun with uh, the people around you. Yeah, honestly, if you're asking that question. You're, in a, you're talking from a losing position. Like, just go on the offense. Just, just do it. You know, just, just start it out. Buy a fucking, like, the, the worst PC you can get that allows you to stream. Get yourself a Logitech <laughs> webcam. Get yourself kind of the very bare bones. Not even, you don't even need a webcam at first. Like, you can just start streaming without a webcam. Look at Lyric. Look at, like, uh, how is this guy? Like, Night Blue. Look at, like, there's many, 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 many uh, streamers don't have a camera just get your ass in that mm. in that chair get a normal internet connection and stream just start mm. already you know for three people one will be your father one will be yourself on the other monitor and one will be your brother <laughs> they'll enjoy the share of that stream yeah. but then someone will join twitch or whatever you're streaming hopefully twitch and they'll be like i want to check out some random stream and then this is someone with three viewers. The one that has his father, his brother, and his own self. And then you'll have four. And then this guy, if you're actually someone entertaining, this guy will call someone else and then someone else. And if you're not entertaining, you need to keep streaming for three people for the next two months, learn how to be entertaining. And then that guy one day will join. You will have four viewers. And that guy will be like, what is this guy doing with four viewers? Maybe it's me. I actually follow. I actually join streamers that have low, low viewers so that you know, maybe this guy has potential and we can get him on board. Mm -hmm. So there's always an opportunity if you're already doing it. If you're waiting to have 2,000 viewers to do shit, you're, gonna, you're, in, for, you're in for a fight. This is, no, mm -hmm. this is not like Ninja. Like, stories like Ninja are non-existent almost. Like, mm -hmm. you know, right place, right time. That is very odd to see. Typically, it's everything with hassle and just doing it and, mm -hmm. and, and not much else. When I started, I was probably like at number 50 or a page seven or like, I don't even know 
uh, wear, but like, and it didn't bother me at all. You were you were in the fucking outro of the Twitch of the Twitch website, okay? I, I don't even know. Like, uh, I guess I was there, so you called tune in. But I just had a great time. I, of course, I had a little bit the luxury that, pr like, for people that follow the competitive scene knew me a bit. So people were just interested in which deck I played, and I had high quality content of playing high on on the. So I was just fine to good at the game, and that of course helps a bit too. And uh, yeah, it turned out. I mean, it's the way I am. I never wanted to change the way of how I stream. That's one of the advices: don't change to the people that are joining your stream. Be yourself and do it your way. Um, like yeah, and I stream the way of yeah. Like I'm just an you get a pretty positive environment. That's what I want to keep in my stream. You, the positive environment sometimes gets a little bit hard with uh, with a lot of viewers, but that's a, definitely how I started. Just a positive <laughs> environment and have fun. We play Hearthstone. Join if you want to watch Hearthstone and have some fun. That's awesome. Look, talking about keeping positive, man, like I'll be honest, I have turned on a lot of uh, streams in the past and i keep doing so and i'll be honest guys you have some of the most hilarious moments i've ever seen and will ever see like how the fuck do you manage to be in those positions so fucking often like every stream you make there's like five or seven of those how like how do you manage uh that's a different one i mean in that way, it's, I guess it's also important to still, like, bring it up as a little bit entertainment. I mean, it's like, yeah, like, it's sometimes unfortunate or really not funny for me. But I can also see if I will be on the other side, it is a super funny spot. So <laughs> I'm not getting salty about it. Uh, I know that, <laughs> that it's, uh, <laughs> so I enjoy, uh, yeah, like, uh, I'm not sure why I always, because sometimes I have the feeling too, why it happens so much. Maybe, like, maybe other people are, yeah, not experiencing it or something, or they just throw these opportunities a bit away. Like, yeah, when there is a really funny moment happening, yeah, then I'm gonna celebrate it a bit. So, uh, I bring it. I bring it maybe a little bit different, but yeah, like. Nah, I mean, I'll be honest. Like the way you react to this, I commend you because I would fucking rage so hard. <laughs> like some of these moments are so ridiculous. I there's like a one percent chance of, and it happens. You know, and you're like. The only thing that can kill me is this. And then that shit happens. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's actually yeah. ridiculous. I have, it, I have it sometimes too. For five or ten minutes or that, then I just have some little reactions too. But then I also try to... <laughs> it's sometimes hard. But try to get back on, uh, back on the game or on my mindset. Uh, but yeah, like... People are keep hammering a little bit on that mindset too, but that's fine. It's a it's a challenge too, and I love it. I love it. <laughs> are you um, looking at other games with uh, with good eyes? With good eyes? Yeah, like are you are you, are you getting uh, interested in uh, other games at the moment? Um, maybe like uh, I. I look some around. The problem is just I'm really bad at some. Like I'm really uh, bad at like uh, a shooter or at, at the mobiles. I'm actually pretty okay, but so and I don't know. Uh, I just what elo are you in League of Legends? Well, I was uh, I was diamond. So I what are you right now? Oh, I haven't played for a year or for one and a half years. So okay, no idea. I I've played some hots sometimes. Well, of the I would have told you to go duo together, but. Uh... Uh, you probably won't even understand. Like you know, when I, when I returned just to for fun, it was ridiculous. Like so many things changed so fast. Oh really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, pfft, so many. Like even the old champions are different now. Oh. They changed the Aurelia, actually. Uh, a few yeah, days ago. I saw that. Like my and my brother is an Aurelia one trick pony. Uh, oh. So he was like so mad when that happened. Oh. He's, he's like in the league that you have between what is it? Um, you have master. Between, between cha challenger and yeah, diamond, master. yeah, that's where he is, and and he but he's a one trick pony. Like if you would look at him, he has like seventy percent games played with him. Really? Oh my god! <laughs> so it's like uh, it's a one trick pony. And then they nerfed it, and now she's already or or she they changed her, and then she was broken, so only banned, and now they nerfed her already or something. I don't know exactly. Yeah, they hot fixed her. Yeah. 
<laughs> after one day. <laughs> after one day, they hold pizza. <laughs> wow. That's insane. That's insane. Oh, man. I re- when I was playing, it was like uh, I was always playing. Uh, she- what did you had? Like, Shivana Top was one of my mains. Like, yeah, it was like season two. You might still remember when yep. you had the Shivana Top set. Yep. That was, uh, that, that was uh, my meta more. Okay, okay, okay. So you played top? Ah, uh, mainly. I like jungle too. Top okay. and jungle. No, okay, I, we I can hate play at some point, man. I'm serious. We should play at some point. Um, I'm, I, I haven't touched the game for a long time, but yeah, like maybe. Maybe you should just open it up so that you are not completely worthless on the game. Uh, yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> the problem is for me sometimes so hard to like really care. I, I hate this farming aspect sometimes. That I'm like I just want to oh. fight. I have too much of this fight feeling. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. So I hate I'm, I'm like yoloing too much now. I feel. I think minions should be removed from the game altogether. <laughs> well, that's why I play Heroes of the Storm now. That is like. Oh, I hear a nice one. Yeah, that's the, the the reason I play. Like I just I'm the guy that just goes in the opponent. I don't know what care about the hero or champion I'm playing. I just go and I see where I will end up I just want to fight and I I'm I'm so confident I win the, that I win the one one yeah so I actually lose as long as I win but I, I, get, I get that confidence and I just go for it again <laughs> oh, 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 that's funny Keep yeah trying. Heroes of the Storm is, is a bit flat for me it's very very simple like really really simple and so I like playing it like for one day and then never touch it again for six months it's a nice second game like that's how yeah. I see it like just that's relax true. You play Hearthstone. I sometimes play with uh, with Groovy, if you might know him. Yeah, uh, of course. Like uh, he's still streaming quite some years, so yeah. sometimes I join him uh, in like a game here or there, or play some solo queue. That's that's pretty funny. So th- then I like it. Then I have the motivation to also do well. <laughs> but uh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I was about to burn Groovy, but I will not. Oh, are you buried? <laughs> I was about to burn it. You can burn uh, it. You I was, can I was burn it. So you don't end up uh, as a washed up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's my second game. I still have my first game, you know, where all the points. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I know he doesn't like banter. It's okay. <laughs> uh, we can all have it, Carlos. For a, we can all have it. As long as we can uh, fire some shots too and uh, burn a little bit. I, if, I, you, I, if, you, if you fire shots, you also have to take. Oh man, I take them like like yeah, a that's man. Why. I take them like a man. Yeah, so then then it's good. Then you are completely fine uh, firing shots. All right. By the way, production. I'm reading in the chat that there's delay between the voice and the picture. What can you tell me about it, production? It's either Twitch or something in the OBS. But let me tell you what, people. Twitch. It's a multi-billion dollar company. There are very low chances that it's actually Twitch. So production, the fuck is happening here? Okay, production just said it's their fault, OBS. Thank you very much. Let's cut the, let's cut the bullshit, shall we? Fucking multi-billion dollar company committing mistakes like this. It can't happen. <laughs> I have a question for you, uh, Thais. And the question is from at xchatty on Twitter. Let me show it. To Carlos R, what is your favorite Hearthstone card? To Tice, what is your favorite League of Legends champion? If you don't know that much about the game, then which one do you think look cool? Another one must explain what it does, when to play it. Okay, so let, 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 let me start off with the Hearthstone card, okay? So my favorite Hearthstone card is um, oh, is a uh, aha, aha, the the aha uh, or aha, aha. Antoni does. Oh, Antoni, right? Antoni does. That's a good. That's a lovely card. I love it too. I absolutely love that card. Mm. So explain to me when when should I use Antoni does? When is Antonio's best used? He is getting a lot of use, like in OTK decks now, one turn kill decks. Okay. Uh, but it's a little bit. Sad. Thank you very much, Thais. I'm not a noob. I know what the fuck. O- hey, I I didn't explain it to you. I explained it to the stream. You always have to explain it to everyone. Are you, are you telling me that, that the stream do not know what a stream knows everything, Thais? I don't. Step okay, up. okay, okay. I will move on. But there it works really well. But it also worked really well in like. Uh, defensive control mages. Control mage, 
uh, then get yourself a full hand of fireballs and throw it over one or two turns in the face. Even play the free smash this year, uh, today again. So with Antonidas. So I even played it today. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen, actually, in your stream, I've seen a lot of Antonidas before. A lot of it. Emote lot or? Of it. Uh, <laughs> the emote is also pretty popular. So yes, absolutely. That, that might also be why. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I embrace to embrace my uh, Antonidas decks from here and there a little bit too. My uh, my favorite here, my favorite uh, champion. Well, I kind of said it already. It was Shivana at the top a lot. I played a lot of Zack top. I know they changed him too. I don't know what they exactly changed, but it was a uh, Shivana top. Um, it was a uh, and it was Zack top. That are my two favorites. These two. Did they change them? Shivana changed. No, they didn't change. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit actually, a little bit. Like the E now. The, yeah, whatever. Honestly. Is she really but, bad now? Yeah, she's she's a. I mean, like I still watch the, the I still watch like the LGS and I she gets zero attention. Zek is like literally anymore. zero attention, like minus yeah. below zero. And but Zek is like really like it's like one of the best junglers now I see, and it's like oh, often pick or ban. Who? Zek. The, the oh, Zek. Yeah, no, he's annoying. He's really annoying. He's really really good. He got changed actually. Yeah, I, I saw he got changed. Like, uh, he has like a completely different ultimate, but he's always... really strong. Like, he has a lot of CC. Like, he sees you for like per second knockout as well, which is he incredible. Was, first, he was way more about healing and like uh, just keep eating your blobs and healing that way. Yeah, it still does that now with four, four to five seconds actual <laughs> CC. Sometimes on two to three people at the same time. Has to be a disaster for mid laner, right? To, uh, it is a, it is an absolute disaster. <laughs> like you play, and you, he can jump. It, he can jump to you from all angles. You know, like this thing when he just takes his arms backwards and just jumps all the way to the map is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. I hate it. Okay. So I have another question from. Uh, this is from Reddit from someone called Cursed Phil. Thais, is it a big burden to be the sexiest esports player? Wow. Well, what can I, what can I say? I just that. What I I just really appreciate it. I uh, I'm not sure if I'm completely agreeing, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> you know, between Lothar and you, I'm not entirely sure. Because uh, now you can Lothar, burden to me. It's fine. I mean, this is a complete fine burden. Lothar has the looks, but with to be honest, with 23.8 percent win ratio, I'm not entirely sure. I can I can. Okay, he just said, okay, production just says it's actually 21.36% win ratio. Mm. Thank you, production. Uh. So, I have another question from uh, Reddit as well. Miker OS is asking, did Ties took in take in consideration to play other games similar to Hearthstone? Uh, yes. Um, I've, like, I love card games, so I, I play... I play a lot of card games also when I'm like not streaming or just in general already. Um, I could still have like, uh, I'm still hoping that maybe there will be one time. Uh, I still hope Artifact might maybe be something, but I first want to see. Like, I'm not gonna, uh, I haven't seen a game that I think is even as close, as good as Hearthstone. So, yeah, I definitely gonna like, I love card games, so we'll definitely try things out if they're gonna be good games. But for now, like, Hearthstone is uh, what I feel by far uh, the best card game. Okay, fair enough. We have a question from Twitter. By the way, hashtag G2 Podcast. You can ask your questions, people. We'll be happy to answer them. Charlotte asks, what are the benefits of being on a team? Your, I love your stream. It's so positive. Oh, she's well, lovely. Oh, on being on a team is really important. It's um, it makes it possible that uh, you can like live your career. That it has like being without a team will make like it's so hard for uh, players. It's like the way you can make it your your living, your job, or at least like for at the start compensation that you can like try to do what you want. You have to prove yourself, but it's like uh, so important to have like an environment around you that wants you to perform the best that has like knowledge that you that they share with you to learn a lot um and 
yet to grow like also teammates and uh everything around it's uh i would never be uh the same person as i am if uh without a teams and especially uh with you too never would i ever be uh so close oh now he leaves. sorry i'm 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 tearing up i'm tearing up i'm tearing up i'm sorry i'm tearing up <laughs> the, the truth is that i i'm i'm playing with you know i like to play with my all the time and it just falls like 20 times per day it's and i hope my my lady is not is watching she she get mad she always tells me not to do that i always do it just not when she's not in front of me okay okay <laughs> no, but teams are really teams are really important like that's it's it's like where it's all star you cannot like uh it, it's like super important all right very good well ties do you have any questions for me actually this is the first time i do it but any questions um, questions uh well, do you, do you, um... When the, when the fuck am I getting a haircut? That's a nice question, Thais. Tomorrow I'm getting a haircut, finally, because I look like a rock star, right? Go next. Well, long hair is always better than short hair, I feel. Like, when it, you, things are not getting fast too long compared to too short. Okay, well, or I hear you, you. Or do you disagree with that? I That's disagree with that, mind. man. I disagree. You know, I come, I come, I come from a background of short hair, you know? Uh... That's well, maybe that's... it's me because I'm like, I'm already looking quite. Uh, I, if I go like super short hair, I look so young, and I'm already. <laughs> I'm always like, yeah, well. well I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look younger here. I look, I try to look sometimes just my age or older. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, but <laughs> how old are you? Fifteen, I'm 23. right? I'm twenty-three. Okay, with fifteen years of age, you can't be university. You're you're lying to me. Sorry. With 15 years of age, you can't be in university. You're okay. lying. That cannot be anymore. <laughs> uh, anyway, Thais, it was an absolute pleasure to be with you. I'll be, I'll be absolutely honest. If we would have another hour and a half to talk, uh, I would talk. right now have a break and go directly to the restroom because between the water, the coffee, and the Coca-Cola, uh, I had literally no chance uh, to hit it. So be absolutely honest, Thais. It's about time. Otherwise, I will explode, and you don't want that to happen on stream. No, please not. Please not. I know that <laughs> feeling on stream too. So then I, I'm really hurrying my game. So I know that feeling. But uh, no, it was a pleasure to be here. Like it's, uh, it's really cool. I think it's a really cool thing uh, to do as a team, uh, a podcast. So yeah, man, uh, uh, just a pleasure to be here. We love you, Thais, and so very much. I hope you guys. We can bring you guys to the office to Berlin. We are actually putting together the gaming office. It's looking great, actually. Uh, not the gaming office, so the, the gaming area. Okay. It's looking great. So I really hope you guys can join us and we create some yeah. content and have some fun. Maybe streaming from there at time. Like, Absolutely, yeah, for sure. We have really good connection. We have. Yeah. A... yeah. Wait, apparently production told me that they lost me. Can you hear me now? One, two, three. Perfect production. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thais, it's been a whole pleasure. Today. We all wish you the very best with the stream. I'll be keep, you know, I'll keep watching, keep posting those gifs, keep keep posting those not gifs, but those stream moments on okay. Twitter because I, it always makes it just cracks me up, man. It just absolutely <laughs> cracks me up. Keep rocking it on YouTube mm -hmm. and keep it up, man. Yeah, I say, man. Let's keep uh, let's keep rocking together. All right, perfect, man. Have a good day. Thanks for being here. All right, and for everyone else. They're still here. Thais is what a fantastic human being. What a beautiful, fantastic, kind hearted human being. I love him. I absolutely love him. Doesn't matter whether Hearthstone dies one day. Doesn't matter. What yeah, it doesn't matter. I always like to work with people like that. Very nice, down to earth, humble, and with willingness to learn and to keep growing and improving and really proving everyone wrong. Guys, it's been a, an absolute pleasure. This has been the third podcast we've made. Uh, I hope you're liking this initiative. Um, thanks very much to all our partners, Logitech, AOC, Paysafe Card, Need for Seed, and now Twitch. We love you so very much. G2Esports.com slash shop. 5% off with the code podcast. Let's fucking go.